new to the group and wants to quickly introduce themselves very, very briefly, we've got um, actually a packed, a packed schedule today, um, or anyone who is hiring, looking for um, uh, to hire a part-time freelance or full-time uh, position, anyone who is looking for a part-time freelance or full-time position, feel free to take the next uh, couple of minutes to hop on. Get off mute and uh, speak up. Well, I guess I'm new, so I'll introduce myself. Hi, everyone. I'm Fernando the One. Uh, I've, this is the first time I joined. I met Josh uh, at a Deloitte networking event last week, uh, and that's how I came to be here. Uh, I'm actually not uh, in the squarely in the market research side of things. I'm more in the uh, customer insights, like human-centered design side of things. But I thought this, this would be an interesting way to learn more about uh, this world. So nice to meet everyone. Wonderful. Thanks, Fernando. Good to have you. Anyone else? All right. What? Oh, I thought I heard something. No. No. OK. All right. Great. So what have we got today? Um, we've got an exciting agenda. We have. Um, we'll do a brief introduction of our co-leads very briefly for those who don't know us. Uh, then we'll hop over to our main uh, attraction today, uh, chat, fireside chat with uh, Steve Wexler. Um, we've got lots of questions for Steve and um, hoping to glean a lot of insights from his vast experience in, in the field. Um, then we'll have uh, our tips and tricks session focusing on how to embed Tableau in uh, mostly PowerPoint and Excel. We'll be presenting uh, different tools uh, to do that. And we also have a live demo from uh, one of the uh, vendors, uh, user ready. Uh, so we'll see um, how to do that. And we'll uh, summarize with uh, usual networking and final words, announcements, and the like. So with that, um, let's do a brief, brief intro. Josh, you want to kick us off? Sure. Hi, I'm Josh Wilson. I'm an independent consultant I'm in Chicago. I do a lot of Tableau, survey data, analysis, visualization, along with uh, advanced statistics like segmentations. Um, yeah, that's Great. me. <laughs> I don't think we have a node uh, today. So I'll go ahead and uh, hi everyone. I'm uh, Sharon Reshef, uh, based in San Jose, California. Also an independent consultant working on, um, working with many of my clients on, on survey work, extracting insights and communicating those insights to, to stakeholders um, from survey data. And um, really glad to be collating this with Josh and meeting all of you. Great, so we're gonna get started. Uh, we have a few questions from the audience, additional questions that uh, Josh and I um, came up with. And we'll also start a live Q&A. Um, Josh, if you could hit that Q&A. So if something comes up uh, while we talk with Steve, uh, please feel free to, to drop it in the chat. I'm actually going to um, stop my sharing so that I can see everyone and monitor the chat, and we will get started. So welcome, Steve. Uh, thank you thank you for being here. Um, why don't we start about do, you telling us about your do, career path? Do we, yes, uh, please. Should... We missed that introduction slide. I don't know where that went. That, um, <laughs> I think I stopped sharing before I had the introduction slide. So Steve, why don't you take a few minutes to introduce yourself to those who might not have heard of you or know you, I'm sure. That's no one here, but just in case. Oh, sure. Hi, I'm Steve Wexler, founder, principal, sole employee, and chief chart looker at her at Data Revelations. Um, I was Tableau's inaugural Iron Viz champion. I think that was back in 1957. Um, I'm a Tableau 
a visionary Hall of Famer. They used to call us Tableau Zen Masters and then realized there was some kind of nasty cultural approbation there. So they came up with the term visionary. Um, I've written two books in the field of data visualization, uh, The Big Book of Dashboards, along with Andy Cotgreave and Jeff Schaefer, and The Big Picture, which is more geared towards the consumers of data visualization and data storage versus the people who are going to be creating those things. Um, and my little sub niche specialty is visualizing survey data with Tableau. And if any of you have visited Data Revelations, you'll see most of the blog posts that are there, and there's like 12 years of them, do with challenges and the tribulations of trying to get Tableau to help you glean insight in survey data. Wonderful. Thank you. You did a much better job than, than my poor slide could have done. Um, so tell us about your career path, Steve, and how you got to where you are today. A lot of cheating, lying, stealing, you know, <laughs> the, the usual ways people advance uh, in this world. Uh, I will try to keep it brief because it's a really weird career. If you go to data revelations and go to the about page, you'll see a, a data visualization kind of showing this career. And you'll see, you know, how did he end up here? Uh, my background is as a musician, by the way, as is Jeff Schaefer's. Uh, he's a, he has a master's in trumpet. He was also smart enough to get an MBA. Um, uh, but I have a master's in studio writing and production. The um, But after running a software company, founding a startup, I ended up at the point in my life where I had to get a job someplace. Um, and I'm like in my mid 40s and kind of panicking. I ended up at a wonderful place called the e-learning guild. It's now called the learning guild as their director of research and emerging technology. And they have tens of thousands of members who are passionate about using technology to help people learn and perform better. And my idea was, wow, you got a lot of members. Let's survey them on about what tools they use, what works, what doesn't work. And I got the job because I said, instead of making static reports, why don't we make interactive visualizations and people can filter these things live, et cetera. And I said, wow, that sounds amazing, but are we gonna have to build a tool to do this? I said, no, there are tools out there. At the time, I had discovered this thing called Spotfire. This is 2006. So I thought we'd use Spotfire. And it's a great name, Spotfire, isn't that? You know, it's like, wow, you know, gosh, what a great tool for finding something that's wrong or noteworthy in your data. Um, this is 2006, by the way. We're talking about the Australopithecan era in, in computer technology. The well, the the owners of the Learning Guild said, you know, why don't you look to see what other tools are out there? I said, okay, good idea. And I started looking at what other tools are out there, and I downloaded and discovered Tableau, and Tableau won the day, um, mostly because it had undo and Spotfire didn't. Imagine trying, come on, think about it for a second. Imagine trying to do what you do if you didn't have undo um, um, and, and that didn't exist in the tool. Now, it, um, this is really a long time ago. This is like 2006, this is version two of Tableau, but I really you know, fell in love with it. And I was at the e-learning guild for two and a half years then I got an offer to join the Institute for Corporate Productivity, formerly called the Human Resources Institute. Now, this is cool because you know who founded the Human Resources Institute? Does anyone know? Tell us. Rensis Likert, the guy who invented oh. the Likert oh. scale. And, it's, oh. and it is Likert, not Likert. Okay, that may be, the, you know, if you get nothing else, Real, no one's going to believe you because it really looks like it should be pronounced Likert, but the guy's name was Rensis Likert, and I think it was his PhD thesis back in the 1930s. Um, he, by the way, Likert was you know long uh, dead by the time I joined the Institute for Corporate Productivity. But there's something cool about doing Likert scale data at a place where the guy who invented the friggin' Likert scale. So um, was there for two and a half years. I was then. Um, laid off and I needed to figure out what I was going to do. I was going to look for a new job and trying to find a new job. I found a data revelations and started blogging about what I knew about, which was visualizing survey data with Tableau. And that's, you know, that's January of 2011. 
by the end of the year, I decided, you know what, I, th I think I'm just going to stay here. So I stayed there with, with just running my own shop. Got it. So my next question is, is my personal question, something that I struggle with. Um, and I see that you also have this background and skill set that is very varied and, and there's a range of things that you do. Um, so how do you describe what you do to people who, um, who you just meet? Uh, what's your kind of elevator? Isn't it, Sharon, isn't it hard to, you know, I, hard. Every, every, every time, every gig I've had, every job I've had, it's never been easy to explain. Like, you know, I, you know, there's a part of me that wants to be a podiatrist. Everyone knows what a podiatrist does, right? Okay. This is you know, so validating, Steve. Thank you know, for it. Even when I was doing music, I was an arranger and orchestrator and trying to explain, well, what is that? You know, I said, oh, I decide where people sit in the pit. You know, no, that's not what I do, et cetera. The, I have yet to be what Tableau's um, uh, mission statement or motto is. We help people see and understand data. And I will elaborate on that. I, and I will say the same thing. I help people see and understand data by turning it into visuals that they can better understand and, and po po possibly have an emotional connection to. So I will turn data into pictures that people will understand and hopefully will resonate with them and will help them understand and make better decisions. Love it. Might steal it. Um, <laughs> what would you be doing if you were not in data visualization? And I'm, I'm, I think this is it, you know, th th that for a while I went back to doing music pretty seriously and the yeah, I'll just do that as a hobby now. I don't intend to pursue it. I think I'm doing what I should be doing. You know, this is this is where I think I can make a decent contribution to others. So I kind of found where I should be and the type of stuff that I should be doing. So nothing. This is this is the right place for me. Wonderful. We're gonna switch over to uh, talking about freelancing. <clears throat> and kind of going going out on your own uh, so so first off what made you decide to to become a freelance consultant well the, 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 i was sort of forced into it hey steve don't let the door hit you on the way out uh type of thing at the institute for corporate productivity um or i4cp the and it had my, been my attention to find a home someplace else and then decided you know what this is this is going okay um uh, as an independent consultant. So I decided to just stay with it. So, you know, good question, but, but Josh, I could ask the same question of you, you know, which is, you know, you know, <laughs> you know the, the type of thing and, and why not find, you know, a place where, where there's a steady paycheck and health insurance, um, mm -hmm. which is by the, you know, number one impediment to people starting their own business is health insurance in this country. So mm -hmm. it is. Yeah. I'm fortunate enough to have a wife who, uh, who has health insurance and, uh, <laughs> but yeah, you're right. I've talked to other people who, um, that's, you know, that they want to, they want to go out on their own and that is like, it's a limiting factor because maybe they're kind of like, they have a spouse who, who isn't working, you know, now and maybe, maybe they're, you know, full-time parent, for example. And so, yeah, but it makes, it, so, makes it really difficult. So both my wife and I, you know, work for ourselves. Um, we pay an enormous amount for health insurance, but at least our plan is terrible. So, uh, um, but, but I'm, 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 I'm more American than what you just said. <laughs> at least it's terrible. Um, the, though I will confess and, you know, anyone who's can go to my site will realize. So come November, I hit this magical age and I am. I get to enjoy the splendors of Medicare, and, and uh, <laughs> so, so you know, Josh and Sharon, you know, you've got 20, 30, 40 years uh, ahead of you before that that comes. But there, there is one little, you know, glimmer of silver lining in this. So. Good, good, something to look forward to. Yeah. Um, what do you know today that you wish you had known? Uh, when you first started freelancing? Um, more, you know, just some of the things, the roadblocks that are going to come up again and again and again, um, uh, and just to be prepared for them. 
you know, all, all these, the, I don't know how many people out there are thinking about a, um, uh, going freelance or being an independent consultant, but let's say, oh, hey, I just, and most, I never took long-term gigs at places, you know, they'd be, you know, certain projects do these things, I'd have multiple clients, etc. cetera. Um, sometimes you need to be hired by an umbrella organization, but the onboarding process to get into an organization can be pretty painful. Um, you're going to need to set up your own cor corporate structure, you know, a limited liability. Uh, um, a lot of places are going to require that you have liability insurance and profession. Um, I'm trying to remember what the two levels of insurance are. Um, Errors and emissions? Or is yeah, then I'm trying to remember what the, um, about that. I, I, you know, there, there are two different forms of, uh, I mean, I see it all the time and I'm even, you know, saw it this week and now I can't remember what they are. It look, all of these things are completely manageable, but there's a whole bun bunch of, uh, legal and administration minutia that is taking away from, Hey, I just want to make great dashboards, visualization, presentations, insights, et cetera. And I've got to deal with all the other crap that's associated with it all manageable all n not uh, terribly daunting but i'm trying to think you know what do i know now um it, it's more just general maturity you know there was way more stubbornness in my views on things no i'm right you're wrong on the expert type of thing and I'm, i've become um a lot more hey maybe this isn't the best way maybe this person has a better idea maybe i should be a little more open-minded so that isn't so that, that's more about um aspects of personal growth versus oh what i know about the industry etc the one thing that constantly dogs me though and every single agreement is if I'm doing a presentation for an organization, they're hiring me to, you know, do a keynote or something like that, or I'm doing a private workshop. They view me as an independent contractor. They view you as an independent contractor. Anything, they see this as anything you do is a work for hire and they own it. So any IP that you bring to the table, mm -hmm. they say, well, we can freely use, we own it. I'm going, use my presentation. I made that. No, you're hiring me to give this. You're not hiring me to build something new for you. You're hiring me to do yeah. something I've already created. But they, but every contract is, oh, we're hiring this person to write code for us, to do this, make a dashboard for us. Of course, what this person does is ours. And those that thing doesn't jive with most of what I'm, mm -hmm. what I'm doing. So don't give in on that if, oh, I'm going to give a workshop. I'm going to do a training session. You owe your own your materials. They don't have the rights to it. So there may be a little pushback that you have to give. And you do it in a friendly manner. They're coming in with mm -hmm. their boilerplate contract that's looking at you a particular way. So there's uh, every time I look at this thing, I get to the uh, intellectual property clause and go, mm -hmm. no, this one's not right. So do you, and, do you have a way that you, that you prefer to kind of phrase that or, or this like suggestions that you, that you propose to say, this is, this is how I would, you know, prefer to phrase this. And the, you, as opposed to going, you mindless idiot. No, the, uh, say, Hey, um, I'm noticing a little problem in this clause. I think it was created under this assumption. Realize everything that I'm doing is based on pre-existing IP that I'm bringing to this. And that um, while I am willing to grant you rights to record the session so that people who are registered for the session can watch it later, people who don't show up, you do not have the rights to use this in perpetuity to create new content based on it, et cetera. And it, it's 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 not that tough and just explain why it is that their clause it isn't as doesn't make sense for this particular situation yep and 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 also if they if they say no just say look you have to be you absolutely have to be prepared to walk on mm -hmm. something like that you don't have to take every gig and 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 that's something uh, you know the the you don't have to deal with bad clients. You don't. Mm -hmm. Yep, I can, I can, uh, I can relate to that. I, I'm always looking at the IP. That's like where I go 
and uh, yeah, I try to try to put something in like anything pre-existing, you know, or developed. It's basically like only what I'm doing for you is yours, <laughs> you know, nothing, nothing else that came before or that I'm doing on anything, you know. What they we will want the right is, you know, the yeah, but if you're using some calculation or algorithm um, that you created mm -hmm. beforehand and you're putting it in this dashboard, we have to be able to continue to use this dashboard, you know, that type of thing. So yeah, it's it's it it can usually be worked out, but it's 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 you are not building something from scratch or writing code for these people. If if you are, you know, yeah, they're hiring you to do that. It's their stuff, um, um, and you know, they're hopefully paying you um, properly for for this. If it's a presentation based on something you already did, no, that's yours. Yep, completely agree. Um, How do you think data visualization freelancers can distinguish themselves or stand out from the crowd? That's very hard especially now it was easier to you know 10 12 years ago um do not be intimidated by some of the stuff that you see out there um some people are doing things which is are they even using the same tool i'm using or what 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 is you know 87 map layers that going on in this thing this mm -hmm. is nuts um just in you know, find an area you know it, this, I'm going to attempt to distill some of the wisdom of Seth Godin, which is find an audience that will appreciate what you have to bring to the table and service them generously with good content and useful things. So find an area where, you know what, I think I have something helpful that I can share here and, and, and do so. And that, that's how you can distinguish yourself. In my case, the, the it was it was around survey data it was okay what do i what am i you know pretty good at at this point or have a lot of experience about fine we put together a website indicate hey here's stuff that i do and start blogging about it and fortunately i got you know within a couple of blog posts a couple of people noticed it and i got that i got that very needed feedback and hey that was really worthwhile thank you for sharing that that was really critical for um moving on um i'm gonna give a shout out to the person i remember contacting me because he was he's the, the whole reason there's a zen master program at tableau there's a guy who was extremely well known in the tableau world um for about five six years the most active person in, in terms of innovating and especially in helping people most active person on the forum and he has since kind of moved on his name is joe mako and um, and I'll, you'll see just do a search for joe mako on my website you're going to see oh special shout out to joe mako who helped me figure this out or suggested i do this or um this type of thing etc and i think he he was second blog post or whatever he contacted me and said hey this is great have you thought about this that or the other and that was very helpful for continuing but for those of you who are you know looking hey how um if you've got something to say please share it you know find the thing where where yeah i've got some ideas i'm, I'm excited about things or gee i found this really hard to figure out and then i got it let me help others so they don't have to work as hard as I did and carry on what is the kind of the ethos of this of this community, which is um, being very helpful to others, encouraging others and sharing your expertise with others. So and just don't be discouraged because there's just so many people creating just scary, amazing stuff out there. Your stuff doesn't have to be as a scary, amazing or, you know, crazy curves and things like that produce something that will help a couple of people and you've you've done a very good thing yep love it what is a painful or difficult client experience you've had and how did you overcome it you know there haven't been that many of them there you know the the the, the, the you know josh and sharon others may want to weigh in on this thing um the i had one indirectly and it kind of led to the big book of dashboards. So I think that's a really good thing. But for the most part, um, during discussions or whatever, 
if you know you kind of get that spidey sense that comes up you know <laughs> the back of your neck and go uh oh this one this one this one doesn't feel good um but um some of you may have been in on the session i did last week on on visualizing uncertainty in survey data and the had a client 10 years ago nine years ago and they had a particular way that this their client this is a big forecasting and survey organization and their client had a particular way they wanted to see um their monthly reports and it was just you know seas of uh, red yellow and green uh, all over the place and trying to say was there a big change from the from this period versus the previous period versus this time a year ago and they were a lovely client but they you know their client was really difficult and i suggested you know there's a better way to do this it's not just a matter of automating this you know reduce it was taking three four four people almost a full month to produce these monthly reports they wondered if we did this in tableau could we automate it I said yes but there's a way better way to show this and they were went oh god you're right that is a way better way to do it their client wanted none of it said nope it the way the way i want to see it and just this you know stubbornness for um and I didn't have to experience. I was buffered from it. Um, but that would be the only only time that I just really felt um, you know, a bad experience. You know, I've been very fortunate in that regard, but but I've you know had nothing but really wonderful clients who I look at as collaborators in this. And and I'll I, I will always ask, what is you know, what does success look like? And you know, what what does what does you know what do we need to do to make this uh you know just a, a profoundly wonderful event for everyone that's attending I realize most of my work now is around giving presentations workshops things like that um or being an advisory role oh that should be a darker blue thanks see you um that type of thing um from time to time i will still do you know dashboard development work but not not, not as much but what does what do we need to do for you to be just you know for us mutually for this to be a really successful thing and they've been wonderful partners so i just haven't had bad times sorry can't tell you how to how to how to dodge them because everyone's been been delightful great no, Either that i just not don't remember any of it <laughs> yeah, I, great I felt stuff. that I, I i felt that um he said uh yeah the your your client your client liked it but their client didn't 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 want to to do the thing that you knew you know would would be the right way to visualize it uh, i definitely uh, i'm sure many of us have heard that as well, well that's going to look that's going to happen you know we discuss this you know josh you, you you've sat in on a bunch of things and and you you're going to have arguably a much better way to present the data than than what you, it, it is currently being used in in an organization you know they've got you know 3d pie charts up the wazoo or something like that and you'll try to make your case uh, respectfully and not come in with sharp elbows going look i'm the expert and you should do this instead say well what are the questions we're trying to answer and um, which of these approaches allows us to answer those questions more easily but my advice is look at yourself as being a major league baseball hitter and if you succeed 30 percent of the time you're an all-star so shoot for if i can convince people to change or do this or, or modify you know if, if they listen to me 30 percent of the time i'm succeeding if you're if you're, if you're succeeding 40 percent of the time my gosh you're you know you're going to win the mvp so realize you're going to fail and it will be discouraging but take heart eventually they'll start to see things your ideas will permeate and you'll be appreciated we're going to switch over um to career and data viz questions i just want to pause here and remind everyone those who have joined um, feel free to add questions to the q a anat i see your questions we're going to have a section uh, dedicated to technical um, 
survey data questions at the end. So I'm gonna um, just wait with, with those great questions. And I was just looking at the chat while you were, um, while Josh was fielding the questions or, or, or giving questions and um, people uh, love the message, Steve. It's very encouraging for um, our members to hear um, your, your advice and you kind of validating um, how they feel today being either freelancers or having to deal with stakeholders. Um, so, so great. I'm glad this, this discussion is, is, is useful for everyone. Um, so we've got a, a bunch of people who are new to the data visualization field and they want to know what are the top three things, uh, books, courses, trainings, you would recommend uh, newcomers to the field do take read um, to, in entering the data visualization space. I'm I'm going to take that in a minute. I'm just seeing noticing the chat there and the discouragement, mm -hmm. you know, and 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 the remembering vividly um, being laid off in January, not getting a lot of severance, and 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 having what is truly a humbling experience when someone wins a contest or is elected. Um, to office, I hate when they say I'm truly humbled. No, winning is not humbling. Okay, <laughs> you do not understand what this word means. Um, um, and the the being the age that I was, a family to support, it was it was a, a very tough time. A lot of other things going on with my family, and I got very fortunate and I think three four months later so I'm looking for work I'm not getting it um, I got recommended to do a consulting job around visualizing survey data um, for Time Warner and that recommendation came from Elisa Fink at Tableau so at a very important time somebody at Tableau recommended me for this survey data thing and that would have been in April and it helped tremendously but um, the the please take heart produce work get you know add to your portfolio use tableau public um uh it can take it can take a while um and and i know how discouraging it can be and it's a particularly uh, you know upsetting time um in the tech field and the coding field uh with generative AI and how is this going to impact stuff and use it, use this as an opportunity to, well, F it, I'm going to get up to speed with this. Um, so I would encourage you that way. Okay. But my apologies, but I did see the questions and, 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 and appreciate uh, how discouraging things can be. The, um, what the books to read. So, um, the, these were the ones that had an impact on me at the time there may be other ones um you know, so the, the, maybe something which wonderful things um as good even better but the person who really spoke to me when i was trying to get good at this stuff um, uh, was stephen few and in particular the book uh, now you see it i saw him as a wonderful antidote to a tough Tuftian approach to, you know, Edward Tufte's um, often cited books on data visualization. It, I, every time I look at that and, and, and or attend a workshop, I'm wondering, how am I supposed to apply this in, to my business tomorrow? And you'll have to absolutely get this from Stephen Few. So now you see it was, a, with, and he's got several other books as well. Um, Alberto Cairo has written a lot of great books, but I still think the functional art um, is my favorite. I think that's his first book in the field. So those are both highly recommended. This will sound horribly self-serving because it absolutely is. Um, but I'd say the, the first chapter in the big book of dashboards, which is what I wrote with Andy Cockreave and Jeff Schaefer, I, I can, I can, sing its praises because I wrote verse, virtually none of this chapter. Um, but we realized 
you know, the big book of this may be somebody's first data visualization book. They may not have read these other things, these foundational things. So we need to have a, a, a primer on data visualization as the first chapter. It's really good. And I wrote virtually none of it. So um, hats off to Andy and Jeff in that respect. And now this other book is more for the consumers of data visualization rather than the creators of it, but it may jumpstart your understanding of it. But that's why I wrote the big picture, which is to get try to get everybody in an organization be comfortable with charts and graphs, have a level of graphicacy so that everyone in the organization can have intelligent, informed decisions and make better decisions faster. So that's the big picture, the big book of dashboards. But for me, getting me on what I thought was a really good path were the functional art and uh, now you see it from St the functional art from Alberto Cairo. Now you see it from uh, Stephen Few, uh, other books. Uh, Brent Dykes has a wonderful book on uh, called Effective Data Storytelling, of course, Cole Nussbaumer and Affleck and her storytelling with data books. I mean, they're, they're, they're you know, behind me, I have, um, uh, a, a shelf full of jet, pretty much except for the Beatles book back there, and transcriptions of Beatles tunes, nothing but data visualization books behind me. Jonathan Schwabish's Better Data Visualizations. I mean, there are so many things that I can read. And if you get some nugget, something that has you looking at these things a little bit differently, then that's a that's a really worthwhile book. So hope that helps. Yeah, that's a, that's a great, um, I love those books. I would also also add, not a book but um finding your online community to practice so um makeover monday or storytelling with data are opportunities for newcomers to practice and that was at least for me very useful when i when i got started in the field. hey i'm seeing virage there that is a good book that is comes from um that is a mckinsey uh, uh employees book say it with charts and I, w I was not aware of it until fairly recently. And it's a, a um, somewhat older book, but it's good. So thanks for suggesting that. And then Sharon, totally agree with the uh, various social media platforms for practicing one's craft. That's a great suggestion. So that was um, more for people starting out in the field or, or, or beginning um, to, to get their bearings. What are some intermediate and advanced um, courses or books that you, you would recommend for those already in the field for, for a few years and wanting to take it to the next level? Um, you know, it's hard to say, you know, the, 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 I would encourage people to jump into the various conversations on LinkedIn and Twitter and see where it takes them. Um, I'm sorry, did I say Twitter? I meant the <laughs> platform formerly known as Twitter. Um, uh, or X, it, 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 I've conflicted with that, but there have been some, um, there continue to be some really good and engaging discussions that happen there. Uh, Nick Deborah, who um, is kind of a disciple of Stephen Fuse and ended up kind of taking over uh, the, the, his workshop, Stephen Fuse workshops, he has a new book that's coming out in about a month called Practical Charts. But he wrote a wonderful article for Nightingale, that's the magazine of the Data Visualization Society, on how connected scatter plots always make him feel dumb. And the, the because they're so hard to follow and understand what's going on in them. And, and uh, if time permits, you know, I'll share what a typical connected scatter plot looks like. And you're going to go, oh my God, it's a line chart, but it's kind of looping back on itself. How can that be? It's a, time doesn't go that way. Um, and he came up with, here are alternative ways for showing exactly the same data that I think are clearer and more compelling. But you had John Byrne Murdoch of the Financial Times, you know, you know, one of the really great practitioners weighing in on this and, and a bunch of other people sharing their thoughts on it and that that that's where i hang out you know is what are these people who are doing great work what are they talking about what are they saying what are they writing their newsletters their stuff that's going on um that's how i'm trying to keep my game up so to speak look there there are so many people that are offering you know great workshops and courses and great books and 
th that it would be hard for me to find you know, one in particular, but um, find some people who, gee, I like what they're writing. They're c coming out and producing stuff on a regular basis. Follow them on LinkedIn for sure. If you can stomach dealing with Twitter slash X, follow them there and just see who's responding and add that to your to your vocabulary. Okay, so we are a team, uh, a group of, of market researchers or, or working in the market research survey field. What are the, the outstanding characteristics or, or what makes a market researcher uh, excellent in your opinion? You would know better than I do, Sharon, Sharon, sorry, um, okay. and, and, and others. This is where, where the, the um, I'm, in my area is what is the visualization that's going to provide the greatest amount of understanding and clarity versus under having a really good um, feel for what questions should we be asking and in what order and to what audience so that we are effectively uh, getting the best data uh, to help us you know guide our decision making here so the I couldn't tell you, you know, the, the, um, I've worked with some pretty heavy hitters in this area, you know, um, on some, some pretty grown up and important, um, surveys, including the, uh, 2020 election. I'm sorry. I didn't do a little more probing when I was doing some work for some of the big survey companies they, you know, and ask them, Oh, they're bringing me in as the, you know, uh, the, the visualization expert, but had I been not quite as stressed out about delivering my part of the deal, I might've asked more about, well, you know, how do you go about asking, you know, creating the questions, who do you ask, et cetera. So, think I'm going to disappoint you on this one, Sharon. Okay. Honesty. Honesty is, is, uh, is never disappointing. All right. We're going to we'll take over here. technical. Yeah. Yeah. That's a couple of technical questions. And I think we have about 10 minutes left with Steve. Okay. So, and we have maybe eight or so questions. So, um, Slightly, slightly shifting to to maybe a lightning round or, or a, <laughs> maybe a couple couple more extended, but uh, so so this question has to do with um, statistical significant changes, uh, which I know you have some opinions about and experience with, Steve. Um, I'm fairly new to Tableau. What's the best way to visualize statistically significant changes over time for tracking studies? Some non-Tableau tools have the formulas already built in, and are smart enough to determine you know, which, what, what to use and highlight significant changes. Even Qualtrics has uh, dashboards th that show significance. Uh, can't seem to figure this out with Tableau. It's important for clients to know whether a change is real or directional, which I agree with. What are, you, what are your thoughts on uh, visualizing statistical significance over time? You know, this, is, this, this seems a little too coincidental. Um, uh, Josh, given the last blog post I wrote and the um, in uh, the LinkedIn live session that I did last week on this, but this has come up several times over my career, which is we need to show such and such. Um, we need to show uh, in, uh, error bars. We need to show and be able to adjust the confidence interval. We need to show that the change from this period to the previous period was significant you know, based on this particular formula that we use to determine is this thing significant. So I've written a whole bunch of blog posts on this. And if you just go to my you know, website and type either the word error, confidence, significance, you'll find a, a whole bunch of stuff that you can steal. Um, speaking about IP, yeah, anything that's downloadable, it's yours. Go ahead, you know, say nice things about me. Um, but the all the formulas are there and here's how that you can apply them so it's it's the uh, a discussion of what's the best way to visualize it is still way up in the air 
So here, the, the something that's continuing to bother me, even after last week's jam session with some uh, pretty heavy hitters in the uh, in, in the field around this, was, uh, hey, here's this line chart. And at a couple of points, we're showing a little red dot, meaning, oh, the change was significant in the previous period. Or, hey, uh, I've got this, I'm showing this period versus the previous period. And there are a few places where there are little dots, meaning, oh, this is significant. What you still haven't shown is the margin of error. You know, that this notion that 42% of people said such and such. And six, for sixty-three percent of people who said this, well, your margin of error might be plus or minus four points. And well, what does that mean? You know, most people just see something that says sixty-three percent and they take it. And down at the you know way in small type, six-point type, you know it has, it has plus or minus such and such. And maybe showing people what that looks like, you know, that it's oh my gosh. You're trying to report that there's a big difference between what a, um, a seniors have to say and what a teenagers have to you know think about something, when in fact if you put the margin of error there's a huge overlap. So I'm 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 wondering if we're doing a disservice not showing that to people. So that's kind of my uh, 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 ongoing uh, thoughts on this because it's it's pretty freaky when you see you're, you're expecting to see you know a bar that's a certain length or a dot that's at a certain location and instead you go well it's actually it could be as low as this or as high as this and maybe it's even not even in there could be something totally different you've only got um 95 confidence that the actual reflection of the of the total population is there this could be one of those cases where it's totally something different hope that made sense so in any case you'll find an f ton of things that you can uh take and borrow and copy and use to to uh, to do this and the cool thing about it is when you end up filtering it and saying oh i just want to show it for the east region it will automatically uh, do all the calculations and will still have the same statistical significance but now based on on just this region versus that region or this period versus that period. That's why I like doing it in Tableau as opposed to having it all pre-calculated someplace else. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I can I can definitely recommend um, that everyone check out Steve's uh, blog and, and the things that he's, he's shared. I've definitely uh, borrowed a few over the years and, and continue to do so. <laughs> so it's much appreciated. Uh, by me, for sure. And not um, that's a good point, which is, you know, which is, you know, the cone of uncertainty in with hurricanes confuses the heck out of people because, you know, then, and, and that's something that Alberto Cairo has written because it looks like it's just getting bigger and it's going to uh, uh, take over this larger landmass when in fact is, oh, we're not sure where it's going. It could be here. It could be there. So really good observation. And I, I, I think there are ways that we can show lay people uncertainty in survey data and get them to get it, especially if it's interactive. You know, they go, okay, we said 43%, but it actually, this thing then expands and go, it could be as low as this and as high as this. And you see, oh, you know, we're, we're not as solid as we thought we were. Yep. Well, in the interest of time, we have a couple more kind of general topics. I'm wondering, Sharon, if we just um, kind of, kind of condense and and try, try to hit the topic. So we, we wanted to ask about um, presenting data and maybe maybe we just ask um, what what if there's anything that you have to share that you think is, you know, what, that you would be good for this audience to hear as far as, you know, how like tools that you use um, to present data, any tips for storytelling with data visualization? The, the, the you know, you know, we could spend three days easily talking about <laughs> tips for uh, data storytelling and data visualization. Um, the the tools I use, uh, uh, almost universally, I'll you know, create the stuff in Tableau and then it ends up, if I'm presenting, it's gonna end up in PowerPoint or Canva. Uh, and we'll do it as a Canva or PowerPoint presentation. I know that Sharon is going to show, um, you know, embedding Tableau 
uh, inside PowerPoint. And I've seen the other way around also, where someone ends up just living entirely in Tableau and kind of have things they've copied and pasted from from PowerPoint into the into Tableau and using the images as just dashboard objects and handling it that way. So um, the other thing is if I'm doing a live presentation, I absolutely rely on a Logitech Spotlight presenter, you know, do that little highlighting thing that you've probably uh, seen a bunch of stuff. Uh, I know Andy Cotgrave and Jeff Schaefer don't travel without these. I travel with two of them in case one breaks. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Good to know. Um, Maybe one more question also on um, generative AI, Steve. Um, how do you think it'll, does it impact the work that you do? Do you use it in your work at all? Yeah, I do use it. It's a, I've kind of relied on Jeff Schaefer, who's way ahead of the curve on this stuff, to show me what he's doing and how he's using it. But uh, he dumped a big data set into it using what was the, um, uh, at the time called the, the the code interpreter plugin. Now it's called something else. And he just uploaded a data set and said, um, tell me about this data set. And he said, conduct some exploratory data analysis. And it ended up looking for interesting things that was in the data and building some good charts. So I think it will, at least right now, shorten the time to doing some experimentation. And oh, it kind of got me started in a good direction. Am I going to use the charts it created? Probably not. But it found something, it did some things automatically and has saved me a whole bunch of time. So I would, and I'm planning to use it for a little survey I put together. I'm going to ask everybody to fill out the survey. By the way, I'll find the link to it. But I've not done a very good job helping anyone on my website with respect to open-ended responses, verbatim responses. And I asked, I, I put a survey out in the wild asking people, what open-ended, what tools do you use for analyzing open-ended responses? And do you like them? And what comments do you have? I fully intend to use um, uh, ChatGPT to analyze this data set. You know, I'm going to upload it and say, tell me something about this. What Which tools do people like? Which don't they like? What is the most often used, et cetera? Um, but while we move on to the next segment, um, if there are people here who are, in fact, you know, have a beloved or, or bedeviling uh, tool that they've used for open-ended responses, it's just, it's like a three-question survey. I'd like to get more I think I've got like 40 survey responses. I'd like to get a bit more than that and people weighing in on that. So embrace AI. Don't look at it as a threat. Look at it as a eager um, and incredibly inexperienced assistant. Okay. Love it. I know I'm not, I want to make sure that, that all your questions were, were covered because uh, you fed them in before and during. Did you get good answers? to your questions or not? I did, and I was going to ask later if we can just um, kind of like pull in Steve on the Slack and maybe ask him questions that other people asked and we didn't have a chance to go over, but we'll have to do that in the Slack and maybe not right now, not ambush you right now. <laughs> Great idea. Steve, will you join our Slack? I am joined. I'm, I'm He's on. Your, He's on. I'm He's on. Slack chat. Perfect. Okay. All right. OK, we'll start a new uh, thread with the yeah. additional question, great suggestion. Okay, so with that, um, we're gonna go to the next portion, our, our tips and tricks. Um, so let me share my screen. And we're gonna get dizzy again, but very quickly. Okay, so tips and tricks today. And as Steve mentioned, we're gonna talk about um, embedding dashboards, mainly in PowerPoint and in Excel. And before we dive in, um, just wanted to kind of highlight why we would do this, why this is a good thing, 
you know, we've got Tableau, why do we need to go back and insert it in, into PowerPoint? And I think a lot of the themes that came up um, actually from our discussion today with Steve is that sometimes that is just what our stakeholders or clients want, right? Um, and if that's something that's crucial to them, then that's necessary for them for, for to facilitate their understanding of the topic, right? And, uh, the more hurdles we put in their way of seeing and understanding the data, uh, the, the 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 longer it'll take for them to to understand our our, our to hear our message and, and to understand it. So um, it's definitely it it can be a tool, right? It can be a tool to use when there's some barrier for our our stakeholders to just go directly to Tableau. Um, sometimes it's easier because there's uh, a transition. The team is not fully transitioned over to Tableau, right? There's some um, transitioning from legacy systems over to Tableau so it can facilitate that transition. Uh, and sometimes we're simply being asked to do that. So why not uh, get comfortable with, with uh, tools that can do that? So uh, we're going to see a few a few tools today, and we'll just do a live session. The first one is called Viz Slides from the company called uh, Info Topics. I'm going to get out of presentation mode so that you guys can see uh, what's happening here. Um, basically, what need what you need to do, and this is just going to be a, a how to session, is if you don't have this, it's a, it's a free uh, add in, free PowerPoint add in. So you kind of hit get add-ins and you look it up and i've already uh downloaded it there's no space there it is so you would just look it up hit add and once you've added it you go to my add-ins and you add this slides. very simple very easy and what it does is it opens this, uh, this, it creates this container in PowerPoint that you see me highlighting here. And actually, let's do this. This is just an image, but here is the container that gets added. Um, the free version lets you connect to a Tableau public uh, visualization. There's paid versions, of course, and that will let you connect to a dashboard in your um, Tableau server instance. So I hit um, Tableau Public, next. I put in um, one of my visualizations. So I'm just gonna copy this link here to my visualization. Hit Finish, let it run, and there we are. So this is um, a dashboard that I created that's on my Tableau Public. And the neat thing about this, so you do have to kind of play around with um, the size of your dashboard, if you want it to take up the entire space and um, automating, have it on kind of um, have the size change automatically. This is a, a fixed dashboard. But um, aside from that formatting, the neat thing about it, so it's completely interactive, right? It will um, update. These are, this is a parameter. If you have filters, for example, I've got filters here. It updates based on your filters and you can actually save those filters so that if you're sending your presentation to someone and you want them to see the filtered version um, it will save that filter in the saved version and that's that's pretty neat uh, too so that was info topic so that's their powerpoint add-in they have the same exact add-in for excel i've already uh, pre-populated this one, but it works in exactly the same way. You simply go to um, insert, either get add-ins if you have to add this one for the first time, or these slides opens this container and um, embed away. Very simple. This is how, when you hit the insert, it will just populate, create this container, and this is um, what it looks like. So that was um, Viz Slides from Info Topics. And um, there's, a, there's other uh, similar tools. 
Uh, Web Viewer is another one. It doesn't really play well with Mac, which I have, so I won't be demonstrating that, but you guys can check it out. If you use a PC, that would be a, a great tool for you guys. And the next one is uh, a product called Pixel Perfect from a company called User Ready. And we are lucky enough to have the product manager of this product with us today. So um, in a moment, I'll hand it over to uh, Anirban Ghosh, who is, as I said, the product manager for Pixel Perfect. Pixel Perfect is a product uh, in the umbrella of User Ready, um, a data and analytics firm headquartered in New York. Uh, they are Tableau Gold Partner since uh, 2012. And um, let me hand it over uh, to you, Anirban, for a demo of Pixel Perfect. Thank you, Sharon. Uh, I just need the shared screen privileges. Yes, I'm able to share my screen now. Quick check, can you hear me fine? Yes, we can. Perfect. All right, uh, quick check. Are you able to see my screen as well? Yes. Perfect. All right. So thank you, everyone. Uh, good to meet you all. Uh, so today we are going to take a look at a product by the name Pixel Perfect. So I got 10 minutes uh, to present. So uh, I the three areas that you're going to see in the next 10 minutes. First is the context of why we created Pixel Perfect. Uh, what is the use case that it solves? And most importantly, we're going to take a look at some of the examples uh, by directly interacting with the tool. Uh, please feel free to share your questions on the chat box. We'll try to ask as many of your questions as possible towards the end. All right, without further ado, let's get started. So like Shannon mentioned, uh, UserD as an organization, uh, we have been Tableau partners since the year 2012. And uh, around the year 2018, a few of Tableau's enterprise customers uh, reached out to us uh, with a key problem statement. The problem statement was, uh, they decided to move to Tableau, uh, but then they had legacy tools like business objects, sometimes Hyperion, MicroStrategy, Crystal Reports, SSRS, and they were not able to replace some of these legacy reports because Tableau did not support those features and functionalities. Uh, in further discussions with them, we realized there are three areas uh, where there are some enterprise reporting use cases which Tableau or modern BI tools like even Power BI or, or ClickView does not support. So the three, we, from the problem statement, we understood the three buckets that needed some help. The first bucket was around regulatory and compliance reports. The third bucket, second bucket of use cases were around leadership reports. And then the third bucket of use case was around operation reports. Now this operation reports tend to be very highly distributed. Uh, these were weekly, monthly reports. The reporting format was sometimes Excel and sometimes PDF, but mostly Excels. And they could be of various shape, size, and form. The executive and management reports tend, uh, you, I mean, seemed like they were mostly PDF and PowerPoint kind of use cases. They had restricted distribution, but it was important that the data reached to the leadership daily and quarterly in the form of daily and quarterly reports. And most of them wanted the data or they wanted to consume the reports via their handle devices. Talking about the first bucket, regulatory and compliance report, these had the least distribution, but it was important that these reports reached out at the right time. It, it was important that the report format was perfect. It was important that the data is accurate 100% of the time. Typical format was PDF for the regulatory and compliance reports. In understanding this variety of use cases, uh, we attempted to building a solution by the name Pixel Perfect. And the first version of the solution we launched in the year 2018, right after Tableau had opened up the extensions API in Tableau version 2018.2. Between 2018 and now, uh, today we have solved uh, reporting and report distribution use cases by numerous of Tableau customers. And there are five, the two buckets of use cases, two buckets of features that the product uh, has can provide. The first bucket of use case, we like to call it under on-demand, 
And the second bucket of features, we like to call it under scale distribution. Under the first bucket on demand, Pixel Perfect can provide a single click print ready button. Uh, we support all popular reporting formats starting from PDF, PowerPoint, Excel, CSV, Word, HTML. Uh, we can produce paginated PDF reports right out of Tableau. We can produce cross-tab Excel reports. I heard uh, during the chat, a couple of team members or a couple of participants were talking about cross-tabular report. This is a problem statement that we have been able to support. Then we can customize the headers, footers, and listings in your reports. Also, we, can, we have the capability to bring in multiple dashboards and consolidate it while we want to, while, as we share with your stakeholders, either in, internal or external to the organization. We also support report bursting. So we can take all the reports and can use your SMTP or SFTP to distribute the reports from within Tableau, keeping in mind the row level entitlements or the data source entitlements or the dashboard level entitlements. Now, all of these things will happen within Tableau. Uh, we support Tableau Server as well as Tableau Cloud. Uh, with this, I'm going to take you to my Tableau environment. We're going to take a look at if you use cases one by one. And like I said, please feel free to ask your questions. Uh, we're going to try to attempt as many questions as possible um, right after we finish the demo in a few minutes. So the first use case that I'm going to share with you is from a um, life sciences client. Now, this typical use case is from the risk and regulatory uh, vertical. So here, this particular client um, had a set of reports, four reports, and then all the reports looked up to this cross tabular data. And the use case here is, how do we get all the data and produce a risk and regulatory report, which used to be, used to be supported by legacy Cognos. With Pixel Perfect, we are able to provide these kind of buttons on top, on top of the Tableau environment or on top of the Tableau dash, dashboard. And within one single click, we should be able to get all the data and produce a print ready report. Now, this report, as you can see, has 40, 19 pages. Uh, essentially, there are four separate reports, and we have been able to consolidate all of them uh, because all of the reports look up to the same Tableau worksheet. Now, if I click on this second report, I have a cover page, and if I if I scroll below, I can see Pixel Perfect is able to add a header. Then we have the, the, the report, which has, again, as you can see, as a legacy look and feel. Uh, we are able to bring in the dimension measures from Tableau and obviously customize the look and feel of how the report should look like in order to mimic what the report looked like in legacy uh, Cognos. And then we are able to support with uh, a, foot, a footer information. And this could be customized for the needs. Now, this is one report. Now, if I click on the third report, again, it will have a very different look and feel. So the point is, as long as the data is available in the Tableau worksheet, Pixel Perfect can pick up the data and produce this print ready well formed and outputs. So this is one of a kind. Now I'm going to take you to one more example from the risk and compliance uh, background again. So here is a, another um, pharmaceutical company in this case. So this particular organization, uh, they, they manufacture a lot of pharmaceutical products. So this is their particular dashboard. So what was important for this particular organization was they have a lot of facilities and the risk team needed to ensure that every single day, all the facility was at optimum uh, working condition. And the risk team needed to report every single morning at 7 a.m., dependent on the geography. They used to support all these requirements using legacy business objects. So this is a report that um, the team wanted. Again, Pixel Perfect was able to take all the data. And within one single click, we were able to take all the data for the role level entitlement. And we were able to create this well formed report. As you can see, this report again has a header. In this case, we were able to bring in the filters from the dashboard itself. And the use case here is sometimes all the, you see there are a lot of filters here. And it's very easy to lose or, or forget the filters that were chosen. So all the filters from the dashboard directly come in here. And then comes the information. We were just able to download the report. And then comes all the information in a hierarchical fashion. So this is essentially talking about the health of the site and then the final summary and observations from the site. If the site is not in a working condition, we'll get to see on, from this report itself. Right? So these kind of curated, good-looking, powerful decks could be presented and built using Pixel Perfect. So this is, these are a couple of use cases from the regulatory and compliance bucket. Now I'm going to take you to a leadership uh, or a leadership and management report. So 
here is again another use case where we have a, a dashboard which has a few KPIs at the top and a few charts at the bottom of the screen as we scroll below. Now the use case here is that the leadership report for this particular wealth management firm, they want to get all this data and they want to consume via handheld format. And they want the information in a bite-sized manner. So what Pixel Perfect again, within one single click, we are able to take this information and able to create this deck. Again, this deck could be totally customized. As you can see here, the cover page has an header. We have, we have added the date and time the report was generated. In this case, it got generated by my name. My tablet username is app admin. And then we have given a table of content. Now, the intent behind the table of content is if someone needs to focus on a particular KPI, say change year over year, they can simply click on it and get to page number two. And this gives them all the KPIs specific to this particular metric. Now, if everything looks good, it's fine. Then we have given them this hyperlink at the bottom of the page. They can again click on home and get back here. Then they can click on the next item and then go to this particular metric. So these kind of experiences, reporting experiences could be built using Pixel Perfect. Now, this is one use case where the leadership wants to consume this report every single morning via the handle device. The second use case was the leadership here met once every month and they wanted a PowerPoint deck to be curated out of this data. So again, within one single click, Pixel Perfect can create the PowerPoint version of the same report. In this case, again, we have all the data in a PowerPoint format with the KPIs broken up by each and every slide. Today, what happens is we see a lot of organizations, a lot of time is spent in just curation of this PowerPoint deck, right? Sometimes organizations use other tools like Canva as well. But with Pixel Perfect, we can automate the creation of these slides. And every single uh, time that the team is meeting before the conversation, we can simply automate and distribute the report via Pixel Perfect itself. And also, if you can see here, this is not a screenshot. I mean, and this all of you are already familiar to Tableau. When Tableau produces a report, Tableau likes to take a screenshot. With Pixel Perfect, it's not a screenshot. You can actually interact with the data, right? So these are some of the options that we can do around uh, report distribution for the leadership and executives. Um, um, Sharon, am I OK with time? I need a couple of minutes more to show a couple of use cases. Is that OK? Yeah, let's let's pause. I think this is great. I want to ask um, if people have questions, because I think maybe someone wants to kind of double click into something you've shown. This is uh, great, especially this last use case where you can format what's coming through. Any questions um, from anyone? OK, please take maybe um, one or two more more minutes on your sure. mind. Yeah, thank you. Uh, the next use case around cross-tab reports. I understand there's a numerous use cases around cross-tabs, and this is something that uh, some of the modern BI tools, including Tableau, is not great at. So I'm going to show you a use case here. So this is a particular workbook. In this workbook, we have three dashboards. This is dashboard number one. And this dashboard has a couple of cross-tabs, one at the top and one at the bottom, including the below cross-tab with a scroll bar. I'm going to click on just one single button here. Uh, in this dashboard also, in this workbook, we have three, two more dashboards. The second dashboard has another cross tab and a couple of uh, charts. And the third dashboard has just one cross tab. So here I clicked on this button. It could have been an Excel or it could be PDF as well. Now what, sorry. Now what Pixel Perfect is able to do is, it's able to bring in all the data from the dashboards or the workbook into one single consolidated Excel file. As you can see here, this file has three tabs. Now in the first tab, you'll see we are able to bring in the first dashboard with, with a header, logo, few filters. Uh, again, this is optional. You can pick and choose the filters, or if not, you can you can totally ignore them. Then we have the first cross tab at the top, and then we have the second cross tab at the bottom. Now are here these you have images. Are these images of the cross tab on your back? No, these are actual data, and you can interact okay. with them. Uh huh. Right, so, so also you can take this data and import it into another third party tool. I understand when you're building models or you're building um, ML models around it, you may want to take this data and, and do some more work on top of it. That's absolutely possible. And most importantly, 
uh, we have been able to bring in all the data behind the scroll bars. As you know, uh, if you were to get this data out of Tableau, Tableau would take a, uh, you would either have to do a data dump where you will lose all the formatting, or you would have to take a screenshot where again you lose all the data. With Pixel Perfect Dome, we can eliminate this kind of problems where we can, we can bring in all the data. There's no limitation at all. Also, as we understand today, Tableau cannot do a dump of more than 50 columns. With Pixel Perfect, again, we have been able to manage that limitation. Also, if you have conditional formatting, we can bring that into the exportable format. So this was the first dashboard. Then the second dashboard had a cross tab at the top and then a scroll bar with a scroll bar and then we had a couple of charts. So we are able to bring that as well. And then we have the third dashboard. So a lot of our, um, so our, our clients of tab Pixel Perfect use Pixel Perfect to consolidate and share the data, sometimes with the stakeholders inside the organization and sometimes with the stakeholders outside the organization. Pixel Perfect can support and on a self-service basis, you don't have to rely on IT. Mm -hmm. Also, some of our clients use Pixel Perfect to monetize the data. That's also possible that you can consolidate and send out this data packets. Now we'll move on to a last use case. The last use case is around data distribution. So how do you distribute data at scale? So I had a dashboard like this, which had a couple of charts and a scroll and a cross tab. And then the output is looks something like this. Now this is just a sample output. It could be any other output. Now, how do we distribute it at scale? So in order to be able to distribute pixel perfect reports, you have to be a creator or an explorer. Obviously, once you're a creator and explorer, you can go to the edit mode. And once you go to the edit mode, you can interact with this pixel perfect extension. Now, when we interact with the extension, uh, if we do a right click, we have an option uh, to configure this extension. And when I hit on configure, it's going to open a web UI. This web UI is the web folio using which you can distribute or burst out Pixel Perfect report. So this is how the web UI looks. Sorry. So this is the how the web UI looks. Now the web UI has a few functionalities, but for now we're going to concentrate on the report distribution functionality. So under report generation, if I have to distribute a report at scale, I'm going to simply select a report template that has been already been configured. Now this template I can take up in the format uh, of choice. This was configured to go out in PDF format, so that's the option it gave me. Uh, it could have been any other popular formats too, uh, like PowerPoint, Excel, CSV, Word, HTML. Uh, we are also planning to launch XLS and uh, RTG format by the end of the year. Uh, once you've selected the format, obviously we can customize the name, we can add um, some customization here. We can also add some encryption if necessary. Uh, and then we can go to burst here. If I click on edit configuration, it gives me the list of all Tableau users and groups. I can give it a name just to make the distribution easy for me. So I've given it a name already, uh, my initials and a report. I'm going to select the distribution, then I can choose the frequency. It could be daily, weekly, or monthly. Based on the frequency I choose, I can choose to send the report via email or drop it to an network drive. If it's an email, I can simply select a subject and add a body. And then I can simply hit on submit. Test report. I'm going to keep it simple. Please find it as team. Thanks. And then I'm going to hit on submit. Just for the purpose of demo, I'm going to say I want the report to be sent out in the next two minutes. I'm going to send out the report at 1.23. And then I'm going to hit on schedule. So this is how easily you'll be able to distribute report uh, to your stakeholders internal or external to the organization. And once you've distributed, we have this jobs tab. Again, this is where you'll be managing all the jobs. So that's Pixel Perfect in a nutshell. Now, uh, we, I will be sharing this deck uh, with Sharon. Uh, it will be socialized with all of you. So right from the use case to how the user story is, plus the sample use cases, plus how you uh, reach out to us, all the information would be available here. So thank you for your time today. Uh, I would be open to taking questions from you. Wonderful. Thank you, Anirban. Um, we have very little time left, uh, but does anyone have specific questions about the demo or for Anirban? If you need more information, please reach out uh, to me. We will also be sharing all of the resources um, recommendations, tips, forums, books uh, after after our meeting today on the Slack channel. So if, if something comes up, uh, find us find us there. We'll share the Slack Slack channel shortly in the in the chat if people need 
that link. But I suggest we um, switch gears here, do a quick uh, networking session, maybe take five minutes. We'll put everyone in uh, breakout rooms um, and suggest uh, folks can talk about what they um, took away from today. And we'll come back here. Let's give it five minutes to respect everyone's time. All right, we're gonna we're gonna try this out. See what everybody's everybody's piecing out now. <laughs> They're like, I'm not talking to anybody. <laughs> <I'm> not, <laughs> turn my camera on. I gotta like. <laughs> well, they have the Slack link. We put it in there. Um. So yeah, definitely join us on Slack. Okay, I think we've reached uh, the so the way that the way that the Bevy works is you tell it the number of rooms. And so I started with six rooms, which had four people, and now it's down to two people per room. So I'm going to reduce the number of rooms here, <laughs> so you can actually have a couple couple people to chat with. All right, maybe we'll three. Do, get, uh, four, yeah, three, four rooms. Okay. So, okay. um, and we'll set it at five minutes. So starting it now, we'll see what happens. Breakout rooms have started. Hello. I think this is uh I don't know what I <laughs> sorry. All right. Hi, Mary. Hi, Emmanuel. Hi. And hi, Anirban. Um, yeah, how was the session? Or let's do a brief round of introductions. Um, Steve and I introduced ourselves. Mary, Emmanuel, do you want to share a little bit about yourself? Uh, sure, I can go first. So um, hi, I'm Mary Rogers. I am uh, located in Westchester County, New York. Up until recently, I headed up uh, brand marketing for a consumer goods company. And so um, my, I consider my superpower being able to use business intelligence and consumer insights to drive revenue and profitability. And so um, I've been told I'm a bit of an anomaly seeing that my background is mostly in marketing, but I, I use data to drive um, both decisions and revenue for organizations. Nice to be here today. Is this your first time joining us, Mary? Yes, it is. Yep. Great. Mary, Great where in Westchester are you? Uh, Katona. I'm in Briarcliff. Oh, a little further south in the neighborhood. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I'm waving. <laughs> <laughs> and Hi. Emmanuel? Sure, I can continue. Um, I'm in the opposite coast. I'm in the West Coast. I'm in Oregon right now. I work as a data analyst for student health at Oregon State University. Mm -hmm. Um, I have followed Steve a couple of years ago since I took a data visualization class and the professor showed us one of her, one of his blogs. And since then I have followed Steve from data uh, from the chart chat that is like the monthly kind of monthly uh, meeting with uh, with Andy, Amanda and Jeff. Um, and yeah, and currently I'm one of well something that Mary, mentioned that one of his uh, her superpowers was all these data insights for me i will say that it would be like to get just get in the mud with the data and just drag the data out of, and try to find something interesting out of that so for me my superpower is just to get not, uh, a bit dirty with the data and just start digging around and that will be <laughs> that's a great superpower <laughs> <laughs> thanks <laughs> And um, have you, are you both using Tableau regularly or, or among others? So I haven't used Tableau. That's why I'm here. I want to learn more about it. Um, I'm currently, you know, obviously interviewing and, you know, lots of different companies use different products. I'm, I've used, you know, Power BI and also Domo in the past. And so, um, you know, I'm interested in really just understanding Tableau. May I ask for your feedback about today? How how was it for you? It's good. I mean, yeah. I mean, 
you know, I'm a novice in this area with this, with this platform. So anything, anything I'm learning is new. Um, so I, I like the idea that you can embed it into PowerPoint. Um, that's super useful, especially for presentation purposes. And also obviously just sharing the data in a format that is, you know, maybe a little more digestible by the ones um, receiving and then maybe possibly repurposing it in the organization. And that's a lot better than just taking a screenshot of the dashboard and put it in the PowerPoint. <laughs> that, that's something people do. And I have heard people doing like just taking a screenshot and put it in a presentation and say like, okay, let, let's, call it, let's call it the day. So having the actual um, way to interact with the data it will be a lot easier for present like, hey, we create this new dashboard, hopefully. And these are all the functionalities that has. So that will be something interesting. Wonderful. And I'm glad. Yeah, we currently use Tableau. So the university as a whole has a Tableau server and we publish there for all the university needs. We've got a few seconds. Uh, anything else, Steve? Just if you can actually get people to interact with your dashboard, <laughs> you will be uh, Versus, I don't want to interact. I want just someone to curate the results for me. So I consider that a great success on your part. Yeah, the other thing is like getting to them to believe the data. <laughs> it's the other challenge if it doesn't support their vision. You know, oh, gosh, um, of course. as a marketer, that's been my biggest challenge. Mm. You know, yeah. more like higher up people, you know. Right, right. Getting credibility uh, and trust. That's we could do a, a our next meetup on that. That's a whole topic: how to build that credibility and trust in the organization. Yeah, it's not even that they the don't data. trust the data. That's that they don't want. They don't want to believe the data. I think it's like mm. slightly different, you know. Um, and they also don't want to be held to the data when it comes to things like segmentation or, you know, uh, sizing a market or what the opportunity is. They don't want to be held accountable for it. That's what I found. That's my personal experience. No. Doesn't stop me though. <laughs> well, great. We're exactly at time. Um, Josh, do we have some uh, final, final remarks? Final uh, closing, closing out recap. Um, yeah, I think just uh, if you want to join the Slack, I just uh, put the link in the chat. Once again, we'll follow up with information. Any additional questions for Steve, we can uh, take care of in there. Yep. Um, and then, yeah, it, it, we'll, we'll notify everyone of upcoming meetings. I think we're going to try and have one in December. So you'll be the first to know about that as well. And we're doing a follow-up survey on this uh, on this session, right? If people might get an email to fill yes. out a quick questionnaire. Yes. So, if you wouldn't mind giving us uh, your feedback mm -hmm. about today. We're continuously learning and improving and uh, want to make sure we, we're bringing something valuable uh, to everyone. Yes. Yeah, it'll be from from um, the Tableau user group, uh, just like you got the invite and all the other communications, there'll be a follow up survey. And by the way, if you click like unsubscribe in any of these emails, it's like it's like a complete unsubscribe of uh, so it's not like you won't get any more emails for this event or whatever. Uh, it's like you, you don't get any more communications from us. Um, so that's just like a, a heads up. If you unsubscribe, it's like from everything. So. You're, you're out of the will if you unsubscribe. <laughs> I want to um, really thank Steve for answering these tough questions uh, very openly, honestly. I think um, it, it was very, for me at least, it was it was very, validating to hear that someone of your caliber steve has gone through many of the challenges that uh, i i feel i go through so really appreciate really appreciate that my pleasure thanks for having me all right take care everyone thanks everyone See you next time Thank you. have a great day bye-bye